Hi, welcome back to Bible class. Today we have another story about Elijah and it comes from 1 Kings chapter 17. In this story, Elijah is still um, trying to stay away from King Ahab and the drought is still going on where it's not raining. And so um, God sends Elijah to stay with a woman in a town called Zarephath and he takes care of them both. Elijah obeyed God and made the long trek north from the hidden ravine where the brook Cherith had dried up to Zarephath. As Elijah came to the town, he saw a widow gathering sticks. Elijah called to the widow. He asked her to bring some water in a jar. As she turned to fetch him the water, Elijah added, and please bring me a piece of bread. The woman explained she did not have any bread. She only had a handful of flour left in a jar and a little oil in a jug. She was gathering some sticks so that she could light a fire to bake their final meal before her food ran out and she and her son died of starvation. The poor widow showed Elijah all the flour she had left. Elijah told the woman not to be afraid and bake enough bread for the three of them, for God would not let the flour be used up or the oil run dry until the Lord sent rain again. The woman used the last of her flour and oil to bake bread, and she shared it with her son and Elijah. To their amazement, when they looked in the jar, the flour was not used up, and the oil had not run dry. The widow and her son were amazed how Elijah's God had provided for them all. From then on, each day they had enough flour and oil to bake bread. And the flour never ran out. And the oil never ran dry. The widow let Elijah stay in an upstairs guest room. Then one day, her son became very ill, and he just became worse and worse until he became so ill he finally stopped breathing. His mother took out her grief on Elijah. What do you have against me, O man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? Give me your son, replied Elijah, and he carried him upstairs to the guest room. He laid the dead body of the boy on his bed mat. Then he prayed, Have you brought tragedy on this widow by causing her son to die? O oh Lord, my God, let this boy's life return to him. The boy did not stir. Elijah continued to pray and stretched himself out over the boy's body. O oh Lord, my God, let this boy's life return to him. The boy did not stir. Elijah prayed a third time, stretching himself over the boy's body. O oh Lord, my God, let this boy's life return to him. The boy stirred. The Lord had heard Elijah's cry and raised the boy back to life. Elijah carried him down to meet his mother. Look, your son is alive. The mother hugged her son, then told Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and the word of the Lord from your mouth is the truth. A long time later, some three years after Elijah first told King Ahab that it would not rain, God spoke to Elijah. He told him to go and present himself to King Ahab once more. Elijah obeyed and said goodbye to the widow and her son. Elijah made his way out of Zarephath and headed south to meet King Ahab. So now we have a song. Uh, this is a new song to... Um, to thank God for the way he takes care of people. Like he took care of Elijah and he takes care of us. So we're gonna do a little sign language with it today. So this is God, God, this is so much, great amount. This is good, good. So when we say God is so good, He's so good 
to me. We can say, he answers prayer. And I love him so. And those are the words in the song. So, sign it with me. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He answers prayers. He answers prayers. He answers prayers. He's so good to me. I love him so. I love him so. I love him so. He's so good to me. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Thanks for singing with me. Next, we have a craft, and it is a cooking craft, and we'll be making uh, some bread out of flour and oil, just like the woman at Zarephath did. So here's how we make Elijah bread. We're going to start with one and a half cups of flour. We're going to add in half a cup of water and a little bit of salt. This is about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. We add in half a cup of water and we stir that together. Stir till we get all the water mixed in with the flour. And then we add one tablespoon of oil. This is olive oil. And mix all that together. If it needs a little bit more water, you could add in a tiny bit more water just to make it smooth. Now we're going to knead the bread. This is when we smush it all together and just work it. We push it and roll it and smash it together. And kneading is something that helps the bread stay together. So we're going to do that for a few turns. And we know the widow at Zarephath would have done this with her bread too. People all over the world need their bread. So now I put a little bit of flour down to keep the bread from sticking. And knead it a little bit more. And then we're going to divide the bread into eight pieces. So cut it in half once, and then each of those halves in half, and then each of those halves in half. And that makes eight pieces that are just about all the same size. Okay, now we're going to smash one piece, roll it around, get it flat, and we can cook it like that, or we can roll it out and make it even flatter like a tortilla. Now the widow of Zarephath, she may have had a pan to cook on. She may have cooked it on a hot rock. Um, there's a lot of ways she could have cooked her bread, but 
If it's flat, it would have cooked really well on a hot rock. She could have heated the rock in the fire and then just baked the bread right on top of the rock. But how we're going to do it is we're going to wrap a piece of foil around the bread. A little on the bottom, on the top. So the bread's inside the foil sandwich. And we're going to iron both sides of the bread for about one minute on each side. And you'll, you're going to want an adult to do this for you because the iron is very hot. And if you don't want to use an iron, you could use a pan on the stove and just cook it about a minute on each side. And again, you want an adult to do that. You might even try baking it in the oven. But we're using an iron here. So this could be done in a classroom that doesn't have a stove in it. But you definitely want an adult doing this. So we got about a minute on one side and we flip it over and do a minute on the other side. Now the foil is going to be very hot so we have the whole thing on top of a hot pad because we don't want to burn the table. Of course, the widow at Zarephath would not have had an iron or a stove. She might have been cooking outside or on a small fire inside but she would not have had an electric iron. So that's just what we're using here. Now, as soon as we've got an, about a minute on each side, we're going to take the bread very carefully out of the foil and it's going to be very hot. And at this point, you wanna let it cool a little bit, but it would be really good with butter maybe some honey. Um, you could put eggs in it or you could just eat it by itself. It's very soft and warm. You could roll it up like a tortilla. Try it out. See how you like it. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for the way you take care of us and provide our needs for us. And thank you for the food that we have to eat and the clothes that we have to wear and our families and our friends and please help us be a blessing to other people the way Elijah was a blessing to the woman at Zarephath and she was a blessing to him. Help us to take care of our friends and neighbors and family and thank you so much for your wonderful blessings especially for your son Jesus in his holy and precious name. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Hope you have a great week.